Good day learners! Welcome back to General Mathematics Learn by Video series. This is still brought to you by Quexbook Smart Mobile Learning and Perk DC Learn Hub. I am Engineer Rex Jason H. Augustine and this is the second part of our introduction to functions. We're still under part 1, functions and their graphs, introduction to functions. For this session, our targeted most essential learning competency given to us by the Department of Education is evaluate a function. That's why our topic for today will just focus on evaluating function. In line with our MELC, our learning objective would be at the end of the lesson, the learner is able to evaluate functions and solve problems involving functions. Evaluating a function. Evaluating a function means replacing the variable in the function, usually x, with a value from the function's domain and computing for the result. To denote that we are evaluating f at constant a in the domain of f, we write f of a. Example number 1. Evaluate the following functions at x equals 2. a, f of x equals 2x plus 4. B, g of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 6. C, h of x equals square root of x plus 1. Our solution would be, for letter A, f of 2 equals 2 times 2 plus 4. We simply replace x in 2x plus 4 with 2. That gives us f of 2 equals 8. For letter B, g of 2 equals 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 6. We simply replace x in x squared minus 2x plus 6 with x equals 2. That gives us g of 2 equals 6. For letter c, h of 2 is equal to square root of 2 plus 1. We replace x in square root of x plus 1 with 2. That gives us h of 2 is equal to square root of 3. Okay? Example number 2. For what values of x can we not evaluate the function f of x is equal to x plus 1 over x squared minus 4? To answer this one, we should note that the denominator of any fraction cannot have the value 0. If the denominator of a fraction is 0, its overall value is undefined. So to get the answer, we should make sure that the denominator x squared minus 4 will not be equal to 0. Transposing negative 4 to the other side gives us x squared should not be equal to 4. Getting the square root of both sides will give us x should not be equal to square root of 4. Therefore, x should not be equal to negative 2 and positive 2. Since negative 2 and 2 are not in the domain, we cannot evaluate the function at x equals negative 2 and 2. Alright? Example number 3. Evaluate f of a plus b where f of x is equal to 4x squared minus 3x. To answer this problem, we just need to substitute a plus b to x, making our solution to be f of a plus b is equal to 4 times a plus b squared minus 3 times a plus b. Expanding a plus b squared and distributing negative 3 to quantity a plus b will give us f of a plus b is equal to 4 times a squared plus 2ab plus b squared minus 3a minus 3b. And then distributing 4 to quantity a squared plus 2ab plus b squared will give us f of a plus b is equal to 
4a squared plus 8ab plus 4b squared minus 3a minus 3b. Rearranging the terms, we have f of a plus b is equal to 4a squared minus 3a plus 8ab minus 3b plus 4b squared. This is our final answer. Example number 4. The velocity v in meters per second of a ball thrown upward t seconds after the ball was thrown is given by v of t is equal to 20 minus 9.8 t. Calculate a, v of 0, and b, v of 1. Our solution would be for letter a, v of 0 is equal to 20 minus 9.8 times 0. We simply replace t here with 0. 20 minus 9.8 times 0 is equal to 20 meters per second. For letter B, V of 1, that is equal to 20 minus 9.8 times 1. We just replace T in this equation with 1. 20 minus 9.8 times 1 is equal to 10.2 meters per second. These results indicate that the initial velocity or the velocity of the ball at time is equal to 0 is 20 meters per second and after 1 second when t is equal to 1, the ball is traveling more slowly at 10.2 meters per second. Example number 5. Given f of x is equal to 9 minus x squared if x is less than 2, square root of x plus 7 if x is greater than or equal to 2 but less than 10, and x minus 4 if x is greater than or equal to 10, evaluate the following. Letter A, f of 1. Letter B, f of 3. And letter C, f of 20. Our solution would be for letter A, since 1 is less than 2, we are going to use this part of the piecewise function. f of x is equal to 9 minus x squared if x is less than 2. Okay? So for letter A, that would be f of 1 is equal to 9 minus 1 squared. That is equal to 8. For letter B, f of 3, since 3 is within the range x greater than or equal to 2 but less than 10, we are going to use this part of the piecewise function. f of x is equal to square root of x plus 7 if x is greater than or equal to 2 but less than 10. So for letter B, our solution would be f of 3 is equal to square root of 3 plus 7. That is square root of 10. And for letter C, f of 20, since 20 is greater than 10, we're going to use this part of the piecewise function. f of x is equal to x minus 4 if x is greater than or equal to 10. For letter C, that would be f of 20 is equal to 20 minus 4, which is equal to 16. Alright. Okay, let us have another example. Example number 6. A jeepney ride costs 9 pesos for the first 4 kilometers, and each additional integer kilometer adds 1 peso and 50 cents to the fare. How much would you pay for the fare if you ride a jeepney traveling A, 2 kilometers, and B, 10 kilometers? To solve this problem, we need to first write a piecewise function equation. For this, that would be f of d is equal to 9 if d is less than or equal to 4. And 9 plus 1.5 times quantity d minus 4 
if D is greater than 4. So for A, traveling a distance of 2 kilometers, we're going to use this part of the piecewise function. F of D is equal to 9 if D is less than or equal to 4. So for letter A, F of 2 is equal to 9 pesos. For letter B, traveling a distance of 10 kilometers, we're going to use this part of the piecewise function since 10 kilometers is greater than 4. F of D is equal to 9 plus 1.5 times D minus 4. Substituting 10, that would be F of 10 is equal to 9 plus 1.5 times 10 minus 4. That gives us F of 10 is equal to 18 pesos. Okay? So that's it for evaluating a function. Now, what have we learned? We were able to evaluate functions and solve problems involving functions. In our next video, still under Introduction to Functions, we are going to focus on operations on functions. For more related practice problems, you may use our Quexbook General Mathematics app available from Google Play Store and answer Chapter 1.